We are here at the NCBA convention and you are telling people about parasite control. So tell me a little bit about what you are talking to people about today at the booth. Sabrina, thanks. Um, parasite control is as important now as it ever has been because as we look at over the decades, we're starting to see resistance to our dewormers, our anthelmintics. And, and so how to treat parasites, they've, they've always been of economic significance, but how to treat them is, is, is a very important thing. So what are you suggesting now for treatment? Well, the first thing we look at is what parasites to be concerned about. Because if you, if you look at the label of most dewormers, there would be 20, 30 you know, species and stages of parasites listed. But there's really a top five for me. And, and when, we, when I consider what makes a parasite uh, significant, it's, it's a combination of how common is it and how pathogenic or how much damage it can do. And so when we, when we look at the most common parasite um, in beef cattle, it's, it's ostratasia. And actually it's also the, it's also the most damaging. It, it, it has the most economic impact. And so it owns that space all by itself. When we look at parasites like, like a homonchus and, and lungworms, they're pretty pathogenic. They do a lot of damage, but we see a lot less of them. And when we look at cuparia and esophagostomum, um, they're a lot more common, but they're compared to the other parasites, they're nowhere near as pathogenic. So we focus a lot of what we do around ostratasia. That being said, we can do even more instead of assuming by knowing what parasites are there. And, and the way that we know that is, is to, to do, you know, traditionally fecal egg counts are, are what we do to evaluate parasites, but the problem with fecal egg counts is that we don't know what species they are. So we don't know whether we've got a problem parasite or not. And what complicates it even more is that an adult uh, esophagostomum, for example, may lay 2,000 eggs, where an adult ostertasia only lays 200. And so that egg count really confuses us. Uh, the, the approach we have taken now is that we will do those egg counts, and then we're, we're working with uh, Texas A&M, in their lab and they will do what's called copriculture and that means they'll grow the eggs up it takes about two weeks and we know what species they are so then we know how many of what species that herd is dealing with and we can then decide um, what product to use um, to treat them uh, and and when to treat them so that kind of information must be just extremely vital then to to have to know what you're fighting yes you know at a Lanco um, we don't feel that the kitchen sink is what you want to throw at your herd. Um, everything we do has an intended consequence and an unintended consequence. And so um, we want to use the right products in the right animals at the right time. And species-specific quantitative analysis is our tool to do that in parasitology, where we can, where we can use the right product at the right time. Um, because if we just hit all the animals, we're going to make more resistance and that's gonna make the problem worse. So uh, that's, that's a, a pretty novel approach to what we're doing and, and it's working tremendously well with large producers all across the country.